Uh, and one other thing, I think you guys were mainly thinking, you guys were maybe thinking about making epoxides here or using MCPBA over here. So. Oh, we just didn't know. I, there's a question, the right. next question involves MCPBA, so I thought of that one. So just to briefly review that. Well, there's the next question. Do you have anything thought over MCPBA? Ah, yeah. Do you guys know what this does? No, we haven't. I was done that yet. It makes oxycyclopropanes. So an alkene plus MCPBA gives you an oxycyclopropane, also known as an epoxide. Okay. Yes. Okay. To our next question. All right. So again, the problem is to come up with an alkene and a synthesis that would give us this product. We need to come up with an alkene and a synthesis that would give us this product over here. Well, where, where does it seem like the double bond used to be? And I think we just reviewed a couple minutes ago what the reagent is that would give us a, a oxycyclopropane here. MCPBA. Right. That's going to give us a, a oxycyclopropane. And would we expect this to put the oxygen facing towards us or away from us? Away from us because it's not steric hindrance. Yeah, we would expect it to be away from us so there's less steric hindrance, and that's the product that we wanted over here. So we're done. The answer is MCPBA. What's the solvent for MCPBA? I do not know. We don't need to know what happens. All we know is that MCPBA turns that into a triangle. I don't think it's too important for you to know the mechanism for that, no. Oh, MCPBA. But then if you would add, oh god, if you would add H plus H2O, then you would make two oxygens because you would, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe you should know the mechanism for that. Uh, it's not probably in the best use of our time. It's in the uh, second language book, so it's probably in the textbook as well. So they do have the mechanism uh, in section 1110 for how this makes an epoxide. So you can go over that on your own. Uh, you might be asked to show that mechanism, but uh, I don't think that should be your top priority. The most important thing is just being able to predict the product here, that this makes a peroxide. They probably show that mechanism in the textbook as well, but it's on page 291, anyway, of the second language book. So if you start with an alkene and end with a oxycyclopropane, <coughs> wherever the pi bond was, you just knew it was MCPBA. That is correct. And then, okay, there's another example so here where it's MCPBA with H2Cl2, and then H plus H2O, and that makes that. Right, that's a very important reaction. Can you go through that? Sure. Are we done with this problem? Yeah, okay. So that was the answer to part E. But Did you guys want to go over part F? Know, well, you just also have, oh yeah, we do want to do F. Okay. Is MCPBA always going to make it dashed? Not necessarily. After all, this wouldn't be dashed if we flipped it, right? There's no such thing as being dashed. If we flip this compound, the oxygen would be on the wedge. Why is it that the oxygens ended up here on the dash in this picture? Because they wanted to be opposite to this methyl group. On the other hand, if you flip this, the methyl group would be on the dash, so then this would be on the wedge. So the key point is the MCPBA is going to prefer to put the epoxide on the less hindered face. The MCPBA is going to prefer to create the epoxide oxygen on the less hindered face, wherever that is. Remember that being a wedge or a dash is not an intrinsic property of a molecule, because if we looked at this from the other direction, everything that's on dashes would be wedges, or vice versa. Uh, 